You started to catch him, though. What happened in the middle of the moto? Yeah, I was catching him. I went down over there, and then I was catching back up, and then I got hung in third gear for the last four laps. My bike was stuck in fourth, third gear, and um, I just wanted to ride it, not seize it up. You know, there's long straights, but nah, it was good. You finished second. You can still get the overall to win in the second moto. That's right. Hopefully, I just get another start like that's all I want. Top three or four start, and I'll be up there. Good job, Mike. Thanks, Davey. The 250 riders now getting to the gate, getting ready for their first moto of the 2001 motocross season. We'll be right back with the 250s. Lightweight fight. Stevie Johnston versus Dario Asalas. Friday night fights. Friday. In you know, Ricky Carmichael not only is coming off 13 straight Supercross wins, taking the 250 Supercross title, but David, he's never lost a moto here at Glen Helen. Eight for eight. I know. I noticed that looking over the last five years of all the different results here. Just one, 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 one. And he didn't really start out by liking this track, but I'd like it if I was undefeated. And you know, the odds keep stacking against him to keep these streaks alive. He moved right from one streak in the Supercross series to another streak here at Glen Helen. And uh, from what I've seen in practice, he should be able to keep it going. On a four-stroke, we saw Tim Ferry look very good at the end of the Supercross season on that four-stroke. But you also got the new Honda four-stroke. Now, I've talked to Ryan a little bit. You know, he lives about a mile from my mom now. And he's pretty confident, but it's the first race of the season for him. All these other guys have been out there riding, and they're loose. They've gone through the arm pump process. and. Ryan's got the power and he's got the heart. He's got the fitness that, that Carmichael has. He has all the things that it, it takes to win, but I think he's going to be a little tight. Let's go down to the starting gate. Davey Combs. Of course, all the talks about Carmichael, but I want you guys to keep an eye on this rider. Number 120, Ryan Hughes, making his return to American motocross racing after two years in Europe. Look what he's riding. The Honda CRF 450R. It's a prototype four-stroke. First time it's been ridden in AMA National. Hughes has got amazing hole shots all through his qualifiers. He will be a factor. A great crowd on hand here at Glen Helen Raceway as we take a look at the Suzuki starting grid with Carmichael, Sebastian Tortelli. Tortelli, he was leading in points the last two seasons before injuries chipped into his performance. Mike LaRocco, former 250 and 500 outdoor champion. Stefan Roncata, last year a 125 Supercross champion. And John Dowd, who's now riding a KTM, get back into the swing of things, along with David Villeman, whose Supercross season was rather disappointing. You know, David, you not only have guys like uh, Ryan Hughes that had to qualify to get into this race, but also uh, Stefan Lampada had to qualify, along with a guy named Sean Palmer, an X Games gold medalist who we know can do great things in the snow, but now he's driving motocross. I'll tell you what, he looks pretty good out there. The thing that made him really good in, in uh, just about everything to do with snow, skis, snowboards, is his intelligence. The guy picks really good lines out there, and he doesn't follow riders around. I was really impressed. There's John Dowd on that new uh, four-stroke KTM. And uh, I'll tell you what, I saw Sean Palmer ride that 125 LA Supercross a while back, and then that bet against Mitch Payton. He looks much better now. To the right of Carmichael, Spud Walters, he won his qualifier. He's on a four-stroke. Gates down, the 251st photo of the year underway, and a great start for Carmichael. Hughes with a good start, as well as John Dowd, down number 16. But it's Carmichael taking the early lead. Here's Hughes coming up, showing a tire to Carmichael. Hughes makes the cut, and then slips out. He's not the only one. Look out, carnage. Ricky Carmichael hits the hay bale. Carmichael goes off the track, and Hughes is right there in second place. A new leader, number 934, David Villeman on the two-stroke Yamaha. Ricky having to go through the desert to get back on the track. He's got to go back down and do that whole portion of the racetrack again just to get back where he was. I'd be surprised if he didn't bend the motorcycle. He just flipped. That's a cliff there. He went over, completely over the fence, through everything. Watch what happens. There's a hay bale that's out in the way a little bit right here. He should have probably noticed that during that warm-up lap. He comes up wide, hits it. That's what starts his problems. He's not going to save that. He's headed right for the downhill. While that was going on, Villeman, that crafty Frenchman, snuck around the inside into the lead. About a 7-2 on that dive. 
Didn't have his feet together when he hit the dirt. <laughs> Here's Hughes, number 120 on the Honda four-stroke and uh, the premier for this machine in the AMA motocross series. You, there's not been really much talk about Villeman coming into this race. It's all been Carmichael, Tortelli, Hughes on the four-stroke, and Villeman leads it. He's pulling away, too. Well, it's been after a very tough Supercross season after finishing second to McGrath two seasons ago with some great wins. He slipped to eighth in the points this year. So he's looking to redeem himself on the motocross track. Is that Palmer? Yes, Sean Palmer. He went down hard. And they're looking at his hand or wrist. Ron Woods from Team Honda. Number 13, Tortelli in a great position now. 21's Ron Cotta, 15, the fourth stroke of Tim Ferry. Wyndham up in there too. Wyndham looking really good to this point. Wyndham number 14 on the yellow Suzuki. Oh, it's been a great, interesting start to this 250 first photo of the year. Villeman, Hughes, and Tortelli on the Honda scoreboard. David Villeman is back in the mechanics area. They're looking at the, the bike. It doesn't appear to be anything wrong with David Villeman. He did not go down, but we've got our third leader of this first moto in only two laps. 120, Ryan Hughes. And here comes Tortelli. For the bar, the two Hondas going at it. The two-stroke, number 13 versus the four-stroke. Tortelli to the outside. And Sebastian Tortelli. He's now secured the lead. And look at that, number 15 on the four-stroke, Tim Ferry, not that far away. So Tortelli's got Hughes back there on the new 450. Ferry, who's been hot lately on the proven 426. He can't even hear himself think. There's so much noise going on back there. <laughs> Are you saying the four-stroke is a noisy machine? It's loud. We can hear, it's the only bike you can hear going around the track. I think that speaks for itself right there. <laughs> that's why I was sitting down. You could hear it going around that corner, that's for sure. Tortelli in the lead. He loves this place. He dominated both motos two years ago. Last year, he was runner-up here at Glen Helen. Let's get a new fix now on David Villeman. Davey? Guys, check it out down here in the pits. David Villeman had to pull in as your early leader for Team Yamaha. Villeman had a terrible Supercross series. His luck has followed him outdoors. Had the early lead, got a flat tire, and pulls in. All the Alma mechanics doing what they can to get him back in the race. It's a long outdoor national season. Every point counts. Normally a guy pull out the flat tire, but they're going to try and get him back out there and see what they can salvage. It's a good idea to put Villeman back out on the track so he can see what happens to the track so he can put in a strong second moto. And if I were him, I'd jump in behind the leaders when they came by, get used to that pace. Ricky Carmichael is flying. He passed 13 riders in the last lap alone. At last lap, I had him the same lap time as Tortelli. He's not catching these guys, but he's catching everybody in between. He still has a chance at the top. Whoa. Tim Ferry darn near went for a ride there. What a save. That stuff takes energy, though. Every time you, know, you start adding those up, pretty soon they wear on you. You can see the interval there, first, second, and third. Watch Ferry right here. He's drifting a little bit wide. See those rock right there? His front wheel's going to run right over it. It looks like he's going down right there. You can see how easy it would be to get his foot stuck in the rear wheel. I've seen that happen to people where they get their foot stuck in their own rear wheel and it sends them to the ground. A great move by Ferry to save it as he battles 120. Ryan Hughes for second place here in the opening 250 moto. Tortelli still our leader and looking sharp. You know, I'm not seeing the same aggression from Ryan Hughes that I did in the heat races earlier this morning and yesterday or in the first lap or two so he may be getting nervous and starting to pump up that's what I worried about Tim Ferry finished the Supercross season with two podiums very successful we asked him about his four stroke rival Ryan Hughes and the rest of the competition here with Ryan uh, a couple weeks ago here at Glen Helen uh, we didn't have the hills in and stuff and he's riding good and uh, you know he's got a lot of experience coming off the, uh, you know, the European schedule and stuff so uh, he's gonna be strong I think there's, good, there's going to be a lot of guys running up front. It's going to be a lot of battling, and uh, I think it's not going to be like the passion. It's not going to be a runaway. It's going to be a tight race. What oh, a tight race it is right now for second place. Ferry right on the back rubber of number 120, Ryan Hughes, as they come down that very, very steep hill. It looks like a wall going up that hill. Here's Ferry taking over now. 
Ferry moving into second place. Oh, what a smooth, sensational move by Ferry. Got a great line on the downhill. Clears that double, no problem. See Ryan pop back up in the air right there. He wasn't able to clear it all the way, and Wyndham's starting to reel him in. So Ryan, I, what I talked about at the top of the show, he hasn't raced with these guys all year. I think he's got arm pump right now. Wyndham tries the inside. Oh, his feet come off the pegs. What a challenging track this Glen Helen Raceway is. Spectators got a good view through that section. Those guys are getting so, that's about an 80 foot jump. To the inside, Wyndham, can he make the move? As they head into the sandy section, yes. Kevin Wyndham has moved into third. Normally, Ryan Hughes would put up a huge fight right there, but I think right now he's riding tight, just trying to be smart here. Now, look at the line. See, Hughes is trying to protect the inside, but he's committed. He's got to go wide. Barry can cut back to that inside line right there. That's exactly what happens. He waits, crosses over, gets set in that inside rut. That's an easy pass. Wyndham will make a note of that for later. Carmichael has moved all the way to ninth place. That was after crashing in the last place and being 38 after the first lap of action. Check out our next telecast coming up from Sacramento, California, Saturday, June 2nd. Looking into the bear's eyes, Tom fired. The bear didn't flinch. Welcome to Outdoor Life magazine, where for over 100 years, sportsmen have pursued the big ones, the tough ones, and the sheer enjoyment of the outdoors. Call now and get a full year of Outdoor Life plus two bonus issues and a free gift for just 84 cents an issue at 79% off the cover price. With thrilling graphics, Outdoor Life brings you the tips, the gear, and the expertise to help you get more game, more fish, more satisfaction. There's also a few laughs, big adventure, and special local coverage. Call now and receive this mossy oak rain jacket to keep you dry when the weather's wet. It's yours free and save 79% on a year of Outdoor Life. Call now and see what kind of outdoor excitement. The end of the first 250 moto in which Sebastian Tortelli is leading. But we've bat got a battle now between Hondas. The four stroke, 120. That's Ryan Hughes. And the veteran come from behind her, Mike LaRocca. You can always count on Mike for a last minute charge. And there it is, inside line. Hughes can't really put up much of a fight right there. LaRocco just rides right through him. But this is not going to be good enough for LaRocco. He was nowhere near those guys in the beginning. He's riding fast, but he's still going to have to come into the pits and wonder what's going on up front. Speaking of the pits, Davey's there with Sean Palmer. Davey? Sean, what exactly happened? Uh, I just got tangled up with guys over in that turn. The guy flew off his bike, shoved me into the wall, into the fencing, and I'm out. Pretty much wasted three months of my life to come out and do nothing. What about next week? We'll see how this goes. I don't know. Probably be sore. I mean, I'm going to try to ride next week, but we'll see. Good job, at least the way you qualify and everything, man. You had really hard. You impressed a lot of people. Yeah, thanks, Honda, and everybody helped me. Well, you can tell what a great competitor this guy is as an athlete. We're working on his fingernail. It looked like he ripped the fingernail. Notice he doesn't even talk about it. That's that guy. He doesn't like to show you, doesn't like to show pain or any kind of weakness. You know, just he's disappointed because he put in so much work. He was down there riding, training with Carmichael. Whoa! And hold on to that wild thing, and he did. Ryan Hughes, in his effort to catch up with number five, Mike Larocco. I don't think that's going to happen. Look at the distance that Larocco already put on him. Larocco still riding strong. I think. If that is, in fact, arm pump or whatever, slowing Ryan down a little bit, plus it's the first time he's actually raced the bike in this kind of competition, they could be needing to make adjustments there, but he's just not charging like he normally does. He's not charging like he did in his heat race yesterday and this morning. Watch this. Right behind this that lady's head film, and he hits a bump there, and it gets him a little bit out of timing, and he stuffs the front wheel into that berm too sharp. Good save. The whole moto's been like that for Ryan. LaRocco's had an incredible career. He's 30 years old, placed third in the Supercross Wars for the third consecutive year this last season. Ferry has picked up on our leader, Sebastian Tortelli. Look at that. Tim Ferry has just not given up and chipped away every lap. Right now, 
He's almost to the point of intimidating Sebastian. Ferry to the inside. Ferry takes the lead away from Tortelli. Oh, this is an amazing development. It's taken some time for Tim Ferry to master that four stroke, but he has done so, such a masterful job lately. You see Villeman right there behind those guys. You see Villeman right there going, go ahead. He doesn't want to affect the outcome of this. And because Ferry had been out wide, he was able to cut right across, just the way he passed Ryan Hughes earlier, square across, get the inside line away from Tortelli. Ferry's been hot. He almost left the bike there, Tortelli is not letting him get away. Ooh. Yeah, see how much effort it took him to get to that inside line, but he gets there, gets back on the power, and that's just another bike link he's able to put between himself and Tortelli. Ferry now is starting to pull a little time on Tortelli. Look how excited these fans are. I don't know if they're really pulling for France here. <laughs> A four-stroke hasn't won one of these races since Jimmy Button in 99. Davey? Wow, Brian, I have never seen that kind of aggression from Tim Ferry. Man, he went in deep on that one. Uh, geez, I don't know what to say, really. He's just going after it. You got two laps to go. What are you going to tell him on the board next time? I'm just going to try and keep, keep him focused, make sure that he uh, maintains that level that he's going, and uh, hopefully for two more laps, we can pull it off. Looks well, like Ryan Kennedy was kind of excited. I don't think he really knows what he's going to put on that board. I think he just made that up just then. It's a good strategy, though. Keep him focused. Keep that intensity, because Tortelli is close enough. By the way, Ferry rode at Salt Lake. That was a great battle. He almost stole the win and stopped the streak of Carmichael. Then third in Vegas. He got overshadowed a little bit by Carmichael and McGrath out there battling, but still a fine ride. And keeps that momentum here in the outdoor. I'm really impressed with this. I've always liked the way he rides. He just took him so long to, to ride like this that I started to lose my faith in him a little bit. Up and down his career like a yo-yo. Factory rider, privateer, factory rider. Oh, and he stalls it. A bad break. Villeman stops right behind him, almost to protect him. Well, he's in that deep rut. He couldn't go anywhere. But uh, yeah, he might have tried to help a little bit if somebody came along. They're under the same tent. What a break for Tortelli, because it looked like Ferry was getting away from him. Our new leader again is Sebastian Tortelli. Got a great break there, but the two of them were so far away from everybody. Ferry is still in second place. We'll be right back to see if Tortelli can hold on to the victory. Raceway as Ricky Carmichael went down again, but he has not lost a position. Believe it or not, he's come back from last to eighth place. That's the second time he's been down here in the opening moto. That could have some effect on a confidence level as we enter the final lap of Sebastian Tortelli. Ricky fell in the exact same place. Doesn't seem like when he falls, it really bothers him that much. Art, it seems like it just motivates him. Look how aggressive he's riding. It's the last lap. There's no one he can catch, and he's pinning it. Meanwhile, our leader, Sebastian Tortelli, is waiting through some lap riders. This would be his first moto win since the opening moto of the final motocross race last year. Look out. He almost got sandwiched. He won the opening moto at Steel City last year. And this has got to be a refreshing change from the very difficult Supercross season he just went through. He does so well in those deep ruts. All down the lower portion of this track, the ruts are just up to the foot pegs. You can see he really needed to get through those lapped riders. He was worried about Ferry back there because he's not far behind. The checkers are out. The checkers are waving for Sebastian Tortelli. He loves to win opening rounds. And Tim Ferry, after a side-by-side -side battle with Tortelli, takes second place. Kevin Windham rounding out the top three. LaRocco and Hughes, the top five. Spud Walters in the top ten as we go down to Davey to hear from our winner. Davey? Well, Sebastian, that was a crazy moto, and I got to say, you got the last break. Yeah, I got the last break. You know, um, I guess I was a little bit lucky that uh, Timmy stole the bike into the corner because, you know, I was pushing hard, and he was following me, and you know, I guess my line was not too good. You know, he was catching me up, so, you know, I'm going to work on, on it for the second moto and get some smoother line to get faster, and, you know, it's, it's great to start by a win, always. 
you had a really tough Supercross series. You come back out here, you reassert yourself as a title contender. What do you have left for the second moto? I know I have everything left. You know, the I was expecting more heat, you know, this weekend, and it's pretty cool right now. So, you know, I'm, I'm in great shape. You know, my trainer trained me well. You know, Yannick Carvalho is there to help me out, and, you know, you know, everything is going well. You know, my bike is working great. You know, I, you know, I cannot ask for better. So, you know, I'm just going to put everything together and try to do the same thing second moto. Very, very good ride. Thank you very much. Well, a big effort from number 15 on the Yamaha Tim Ferry. He has to settle for second place. Let's see what he has to say with Davey. Tim, that was a fantastic ride. Tell us about the pass on Tortelli first. Actually, you know, my the Yamaha 426 just powers really hard up that straightaway. I mean, all our bikes are tapped out. I think I just got a little bit more power, and I just uh, just cut him a little on the inside, and uh, he was too far outside. Nothing he could do about it. Just kind of took his line away. You look like you're on your way to the moto win at that point. Then what happened? Uh, I just came into this corner, and I'm, I'm trying to ride a gear higher so it's so you know it's, it's not so violent out of the corners. Try to mellow it out a little bit, and I think I had it maybe third gear. I should have it in second, and uh, my arms are a little pumped up, and. Uh, I just, I didn't pull the clutch in far enough and just stalled it, but luckily it cranked right back up, like second or third kick, so it was cool. Our attention now turns to Grant Langston. Can he become the first rider in 125 national history to win his first American motocross? The 125, second moto, when we return. feet away. Power at the plate. Softball. Think again. The NCAA Softball Championship game tomorrow at 1.15 on ESPN. A 125 National Motocross and Arena Cross champion. Welcome back. Art Ekman, David Bailey, Davey Coombs from Glen Helen Raceway. Scott Sheik preparing at the gate for the 125s along with the defending champion Travis Pastrana who had five overall wins and three podiums last year. For a Pastrana perspective, it's our Suzuki flashback. Last year coming the outdoor season, I really didn't know what to expect. I just come off a third place in Supercross, went out there at Glen Helen, had some of the biggest downhills, uphills, G outs, bumps, breakers, everything that I've ever seen in my entire life. The pro course was just totally different than any amateur course. Ended up fourth, and I was more excited with that fourth place than I could have ever been with anything. I was just like, man, this is the way to start out season. My first professional victory, or moto win at least, came at Mount Morris, mud race. I love the mud, especially racing in it. The second moto I went out, was able to win. I think I did a heel clicker on the first lap. I was just so excited to be out there. All my friends and family was the first race they'd really come to. So uh, a great feeling for me and great to be back in the East Coast too. West Sugar was really the turning point of the season. I really didn't think I had a chance, but that was the point where instead of going out every weekend and going a half to win, I said, you know what? I'm gonna have fun. I'm gonna do what I've always done. Came out, got two great starts, had a really epic battle with Tal and Bowen. We went back and forth. I had some fun, really through the whoops. I was 35 points down at the end of the day. At that point, I was just having fun, and I was happy to be in second of the points. But it went from having fun from Washougal to Millville, and then thinking, wow, you know, after Broome Tioga, I'm only six points down. If I win both the remaining motos, I win the championship, no matter what Roncada ends up doing. Then the pressure hit. I'm like, wow, you know, here we go. I, first year, I came from way off the pace. It's not just having fun anymore, this is a championship. And when I won that last photo, that was the best feeling that anyone could ever have in their entire life. I took the longest victory lap, I think, in the history of motorsports. 
just went out. I just had a blast. I'm wheeling up the hills. The crowd was so into it. I mean, coming from that many points down, no one had really expected there to even be a, a chance for me to come and get the championship. And you know, there it was. It just boom. It happened. And I just wanted to give everyone there, you know, let them experience a little bit of the, the thrill that I was going through. And man, it's just the best day of my entire life. Number 111, Grant Langston out of South Africa, winning his very first American moto. Here this afternoon earlier as we looked down on Langston trying to loosen up those arms. Hey, this is to be interesting. He's got Fonseca on the four stroke just to his left. Larry Ward on the four stroke just to his right. Also Schnell. So those things should hook up pretty good off of that cement and it could close him out. We're off and running second moto 125s round one. On the inside that's Damon Huffman on the four stroke. It's Huffman with a hole shot. Schnell got a good start. Langston over there on the outside gets out to a good one as well. A good clean start for Langston. He doesn't feel he needs to get the top start. Whoa, Keith Johnson's bike as he dismounted. Looked like he just got on it and threw it away. He didn't really think about getting going there straight. And also tied up into it, uh, holding his head there for a while was Talon Volan, number 22. Kelly Smith, number 35, a bad break for the KTM team. Looked like to me that uh, Volan's visor was bent down. He hit his head. So it's Huffman still in the lead. Schnell in second place. And Langston in third. Langston coming down the hill hard. Travis coming down even harder on the inside. Better start for him this time. He's up there where he needs to be so he can take a look at those leaders. Better for Lang Lampson that time. He makes it through the top. A little congestion down at the bottom of the hill and it sorts out as Huffman comes away still leading. Right, Travis just weaved his way through those guys and still tried to go for that double. That was a little sketchy, but it paid off. He moved up. You know, this 125 scene is really something when you get guys like Fonseca and Brock Sellards and Nathan Ramsey, guys who have been in contention or have won titles in the past when they're starting to be mid-pack riders. And we see Huffman, Langston. What a great surprise in the opening round. Yeah, and Schnell on there this time. And Larry Ward, the first moto. A lot of a lot of things I didn't would have never guessed could happen. You know, to see Langston out front, that's not that big of a surprise. There goes Fonseca. He got a bad start the first one, a little bit better this time. He's got the world record bruise on his right thigh. Around his, uh, all down his right side, still left over from that crash in Dallas. Langston. Looking for opportunity now. Look at those ruts, the way they've developed after two motos. The 125 and 250 number one motos. The four stroke is our leader. Along with our regular ESPN2 coverage, Motocross goes network for the Mount Morris round. ABC on June 3rd. He's given him a few looks, that's for sure. Number 100, Mike Brown, isn't out of it. He took second in that first moto, remember? Going through the S's, Brown. And as Travis Pastrana got clipped by Brown, and he went down. Having trouble getting back into it. The fans trying to shout encouragement to him and Pastrano will be way back there. Well, watch this. Travis is going into the corner following Langston but Brown he starts to make the cut. He's going to chop off the corner. Catches Travis by surprise. Now watch Travis. Gets bumped a little bit. He's so shocked he just keeps riding right into the fence. If he didn't expect that he could have got out of it. Now watch his spectator. I don't know if this guy's a Travis fan or not. He's quit hitting me. I don't think he was drink, uh, drinking Coca-Cola there. <laughs> and look at over, over to the left. Right there is Davey Coombs. He's on the scene. What a bad break for Travis. Now he's dropped back. It looks like outside the top 20. Langston making the pass into second place, getting around Schnell while we were watching uh, Pastrana trying to get back into the action. So you got Huffman, number 20, Langston, 111. Then you've got Schnell, number 30. And then Brown is right behind him. A freight train, four-way battle for the lead, really. And once again, you got Langston and Brown in that fight. Coming over from the European season, these guys have got this outdoor stuff dialed in. 
most of them choosing that same line as Mike Brown goes by, number 100. Larry Ward with some problems uh, down in the mechanics area, so let's go to Davey Combs. Davey, what's the problem? Guys, check out the corner. Larry Ward, fourth place in the first moto. He stalled his Yamaha in the corner, and this is the one trouble we saw at the YZ250 up in the Supercross series. That thing is hard to start when it's hot. Larry Ward looks like he's all the way at the back of the pack. He cannot restart that Yamaha. What a tough break for Ward. It looked like he was really having fun today. He was in fifth before that happened. Still up there with the leaders again. We're going to battle going on for first place. Huffman has seen Grant Langston close the gap. Hey, even if Huffman wasn't able to hold Langston off and stayed in this battle up front, that'd be a big confidence booster for him. I always thought of him a little bit more as a supercross rider than outdoor, but looks sharp here. He's not holding anything up. He's riding strong. Boy, these ruts, you better make a decision on the rut before you get there. You know, and the funny thing is, that's what you would think, but the guys that are really going fast, they just go wherever the bike takes them. And they got the strength and the riding skill now, and then they just pin it. As long as you get the throttle on, that bike shoots forward. You can pretty much wiggle around through those ruts, get through it okay. You saw Langston the first lap or a moment ago, just get sideways through those. He moves out of them now. You can hear the four stroke in the lead. Langston going to the outside. Mike Brown, a second place finisher behind number 111 in the first moto, moving into third. Mike Brown may get the reputation of those guys you don't want to be around. The first moto, he sent Brandis into the trees, and this time he sent Travis into the fence. I think they all know what his intentions are now. Langston never follows. Probably doesn't want to get roosted, but he's always got a little different line. Something else he can do. Keep that guy out in front guessing. Crosses over again. This track looks so hard packed, but they, uh, the riders were telling us after practice that there were a lot of rocks coming up through. And you get a four stroke that can really roost. And you can have all kinds of sores all over your body. And Langston's wearing a chest protector. Probably just for that reason. Cuts over to the right. I don't know if that's for a better line. He's just trying to stay out of that shower of rocks he's getting. And Brown has closed the gap. So I know Langston's trying to figure out a way about Huffman, but Huffman's riding so well at this point. Can't do it. And that's allowing this to really get tight. There's the four-stroke power going wide. Langston. Getting closer and closer now, trying to get up alongside Huffman. And Brown just trying to play opportunist there in third. I can't believe how fast they're coming down this hill. It's starting to get really rough. Look at that fishtail all around, the braking bumps there. The tracks watered in between, so they slide from braking bump to braking bump. The back end dances all over the place. Not only does it take great conditioning to go 30 minutes plus two laps, but also a lot of courage on this track. Langston trying to cut it sharp. Now he gets a good turn on Huffman. Langston it is our new leader. Huffman now getting a challenge from Mike Brown. What a smooth move. Well, I remember the days when the 30-minute moto, you know, you paced yourself a little. There goes Brown. Brown moving into second place. You just pace yourself a little bit. Now the intent, it's like a supercross. It's like a heat race. These guys are pinned all the time. I love this line from Langston. He gets in here, makes a little pivot right there when the, he was able to compress that suspension, get on the throttle, make that cut. Chops off a little bit of racetrack right there into the inside of Huffman. Boy, that sure proved the acceleration of the KTM moving out of something like that as we take a look at the field summary. From Glenn Helen, Art Ekman, David Bailey, Davy Coombs bringing you on his tail here as time starts ticking away the overall is on the line right here brown can make a pass and push langston to second it would be brown's overall if it finishes like it is right now identical to the first moto it's langston's overall langston's first brown it would be his second brown is all over him he made a push in the first moto langston said it made him a little nervous the downhills are scary they're even rougher this moto you know Brown's not going to get tired. 
Both circuit guys with a smile on their face. Been a tough season for Mitch Payton's crew. You see Kelly Smith standing right back there behind him. He, he wasn't able to get started in the race, but he doesn't want to miss any of this. Kelly Smith was the last KTM to win an overall. He did it in the mud at Mount Morris. That was KTM's first factory motocross in America, their victory. And of course, they picked up their first Supercross win earlier this year with Langston. Let's go to Davey now. Another guy having a really bad day, Talon Bolin, out after the first lap. He crashed in the first turn with Michael Brandis, actually before Travis Pastrana crashed with him. Bolin, 125 title, hopeful, out with a DNF here in the second moto. Well, he took a real hard crash. It might not just be the bike, it might be physical. As we see Justin Buckaloo, who had such a great start to the Supercross season. This is the corner where Travis had his problems with Brown. He is, he caught Fonseca, he's already passed him, he's working on Buckaloo. He's riding through these guys like they're not even there. He's going the same pace, maybe a little bit quicker than everybody out front right now. You can see he is really pushing it. Pastrana, after going down, just trying to salvage points right now to get back into it. Look ahead to Hangtown Classic in Sacramento. You know, he's taking a lot of outside lines and keeping his momentum up. It seems to be working for him. This could be the title right here. If Travis can't get up and get back up in the top four or five, he's going to give away a lot of points today to Langston and Brown. Doesn't look like he can afford it. See that outside line? It's really paying off. Travis is one of the bigger, heavier riders. See, he's getting out horse powered by Bucklew, who's a lot lighter. He moved right over on him. I tell you what, I'd have done the same thing. So Pastrana in sixth place after making the pass on Bucklew. And Bucklew, his best motocross finish was a ninth last year here at Glen Helen. But boy, he's had a 22nd first moto and is not doing well here now as Pastrana makes this pass. That much momentum he has around the outside. He's able to go into the corner faster. Look at the difference in speed. But he was on the back of the seat going up the hill and he started to wheelie, had to pull in the clutch a little bit. Bucklew caught him and he moved over on him. And it looked like a dirty move, but nobody went down. After the way he got pushed off the track, I don't think he cares what anyone thinks about it. <laughs> Grant Langston is dominating, Davey. Andrew, it looks like Grant's picked up right where he left off. Uh, yeah, Davey, uh, so far I didn't get such a bad start. He got pushed out in the first one or two turns, but he worked his way back up again. But I see now Brown's all over him, and uh, there's nothing in it. It's going to be down to who's the fittest and can hang on the cable till the end. You guys have been this route before, last year in the GPs. Yeah, well, it, it feels like being in Europe at the moment with Brown and uh, Grant going at it like this. So we'll have to see. Last year, Grant came out in top. We'll see what happens this year. but. Grand strong, so I'm hoping we can pull it off this year. Andrew Langston is his uncle, his father's brother, and also wrenches for him. Puts the pit board sign out for him. He's got to be proud of number 111. He's come into his first American motocross and has just simply dominated, really. Sellards also on that KTM. Here comes Pastrana. Pastrana making the move on Sellards, number 18. Boy, Travis looks so much smoother now than he did earlier in the race. You know, part of a couple of reasons for that. One is he's in that panic mode. He's got to get up there and save some points. He's not thinking about riding smooth. He's thinking about riding fast. Also, I noticed in the pits, he had his bike completely apart. They were doing some motor, uh, engine work. They also changed the rear shock. Looks a lot more comfortable this time, but he also looks a lot more aggressive because he can't afford to lose these points. It's the number one plate, defending champion, and Langston and Brown are way up there. Let me qualify my statement a little bit about Langston dominating. He hasn't dominated time-wise. He only has about a three, four-second lead right now, but he just looks so confident and so composed. He doesn't look like that he's riding over his head. He looks like he's going just as fast as he needs to go to win. And he had to talk about in the first moto, that he looked so solid going the speed that he was going. All right, the 125s will be headed toward the checkered flag when we return.
second moto for the 125s. Let's check out and see if number 111 does what he did in the first moto, and that is just put the pedal to the metal. You know, every time he can feel that little bit of challenge from Brown, you can see Brown really dig and try to get up there. And Langston always had an answer for it. So the pace we're watching him ride, which has been the best both motos, is not his max pace. He's got a little more when he needs it. That's pretty impressive. He didn't necessarily get the whole shots either. He had to earn this. And Brown all that looked like he must have made a mistake or something. He just dropped off the pace. Could this be the second consecutive year the green card rider has won the first round of our 125 U.S. Motocross Championship? You might recall Stefan Roncada swept both photos last year. Langston, too, would become the first uh, rider from South Africa to win a 125 race in America. Get out the broom. The checkers are flying. Langston wins both photos in his American motocross debut. Checking out the official scoreboard here on the uh, second moto of action. Langston Brown, Huffman hanging on to third. What a great ride for him. And then Pastrana coming back from the 20s after going down for a fourth place finish. Ernesto Fonseca riding with injuries. He took a seven. Let's go to Davey. Well, Grant, you already got a place in the record books as the first KTM rider ever to win a Supercross. Now you're one of the only three riders in the history of American motocross to win your first national ever. Congratulations. Thanks so much. Uh, just like to thank the team KTM Red Bull. They've done a fantastic job and all the other sponsors. Bike's been fantastic and uh, I've been looking forward to this for many months now and uh, just so happy to come out and win both motors. What about Mike Brown, the guy chased you? It must have seemed like old times. It did actually. I mean, there was a lot of races last year where uh, the two of us were going at it and um, you know, it was, I kind of know Mike a bit, and uh, if you let him get too close, he'll charge. So I just try to get away from him, and uh, you know, I seem to keep the distance. Well, congratulations. It was a fantastic effort. I think you got a whole bunch of new fans here in California. Yeah, it's been great. I mean, the crowd are cheering really, really loud for me, and it's nice to hear all the screaming, so it does help. Good job. Thanks, David. Right behind Langston, you see the 2-2 two -two for the second place overall for Mike Brown and Travis Pastrana. The 3-4, exactly what he had last year, and he came on to win the championship. It looks like a great season. Davey Coombs is with our second place rider. Well, Mike, that was just about as good a ride as you could put in. You charged the whole way, but in the end, Langston just a little more. Yeah, he did. I thought he you know, got behind him and put the pressure on him. And, you know, I raced with him last year, and I know he's a strong rider, and he rides the whole way, you know, and um, we both do. And, and yeah, the last couple laps, you know, I just slacked off, and I'd rather finish this race than crash out, you know, and get second and then go to the next race. You know, the two California tracks is not my favorite, so when we get back east, I think I'll do a little better, hopefully. We've seen you, Mike, for years. You're a privateer out of Tennessee a long time ago. Your time you did with Yamaha, Troy, or rather Honda, Troy. I got to tell you, you're going faster right now than I've ever seen you ride. Yeah, I am. You know, it's, um, it's the bike, too, you know. I've been training hard, and, you know, I think over in Europe's helped me a lot, and, um, my bike's Kawasaki Pro Circuit, Thor, Bridgestone, Scott is working really good. Good job, Mike. Second place in the standings, right behind yeah. Langston. Thanks a lot. So our Suzuki point standings after one round. Grant Langston with the six-point lead over Michael Brown. Pastrana not far off, and Stephen Huffman's right there as well. The 250s at the gate for the final moto here at Glen Helen. Call toll-free to get free information by mail about the Craftmatic Model 2 adjustable bed. This wonderful bed adjusts to hundreds of relaxing positions. Here at Buchanan, he's won the first moto. Looking forward to moto number two, as is a very focused Ricky Carmichael. Let's go to Davey Combs. With this week's Kawasaki bike set, we came down to talk to Chad Watts, the wrench for Ricky Carmichael. He's the 250 national champion. And Chad, you were just named EA Sports Supercross Mechanic of the Year. Congratulations. Thank you very much. What's the setup for here at Glen Helen? Well, due to the hills, I mean, uh, you got to have a gearing that's going to be able to push you up the hills, but there's a lot of straightaways, so you got to kind of compromise. So we're like a happy, meaty, ochre, you know, kind of gearing situation that you can still get you out of the corners, but it won't short rev on the starts. So uh, with the sprocket set that we're running, uh, we should have a good combination. Suspension is really choppy here, and by the end of the day, you're going to need where it's really soft on high-speed compression. Yeah, for the tires this weekend, uh, throughout the day, it's going to get hard as conditions change because they plow out really deep, a little bit of rain and all the water. So you want an intermediate tire at the beginning with the higher knobs, kind of wider spread, uh, knobby situation. 
and by the end of the day, you're going to run like a real soft tire that's going to get you out of the corners and where you won't burn it up by the end of the moto. All right. Well, that's Chad Watts with this week's Kawasaki bike setup for Glen Helen. Number 120, Ryan Hughes, Dan Bentley, along with Ron Woods there, assisting from the Team Honda crew. There's Stefan Roncata, Team Kawasaki. His first full year in 250s after the 125 Supercross Championship of last year. And David Villeman trying to get that rubber warm on the concrete start pad. You know, the difference between Ron Cotta, he's over there laughing and joking around. You look at Tortelli and Carmichael, and this is not funny. Okay, we're set to go. Let's see how Carmichael gets out of the gate. Good start for Ricky. Carmichael and Hughes, Hughes the whole shot. Carmichael got the inside corner though. Dowd once again right with those guys. Lusk, Ferry, Tortelli, Windham, they're all there. Good start. John Dowd right there next to Tortelli. Ferry up there again this time. Not a bad start for LaRocco as well. But out in front, it's the Honda four stroke of Ryan Hughes. Kind of tightened up a little bit in that first moto, David. We'll see how it shakes out here in the second Ricky Carmichael already starting to apply pressure there's Lusk 11 15 is Ferry the Tortelli what moves over to the left as he was getting roosted by both Ferry and Lusk right there oh amazing that Carmichael was able to hold on to that baby that's what happened to Look at Carmichael, this dives into that berm on the inside. Great acceleration. Whatever Chad Watts did to that machine, he did the right thing, that's for sure. Into the shadows. Here comes Hughes. Hughes takes it right back again. Oh, this is an incredible battle for first place. Whoa. And once again, somehow Ricky holds on. RC trying to make up. We're going down twice in the first moto. Retakes the lead on Hughes. These guys seem to have a little something to prove to each other. I think Ricky's just over the whole idea how fast Hughes has been going lately. Hughes wants to show Carmichael, hey, I'm not afraid of you. But watch Carmichael. Look how hard he's pushing it. Back in, hits the edge of that berm, kicks sideways. Now watch how good he is at saving this. Look how strong he is. Keeps his body right in the right place. Straightens that right back out and just regains his composure right away. I had a lot of guys that go down the rest of that hill going, whoo, and it would affect them, not Ricky. Now watch this again. The next time they go down a hill, swapping back and forth, and still makes the pass. Gets a little front end twitch here right at the end. Holds it straight, lands right in this berm, back on the power and pulls away. Now that's showing Hughes, look, <laughs> you can't mess with me. He had a lot of practice with Fish Taylor and Supercross this year. Yeah, this is nothing new. This is more of the same thing, but at outdoors, he's doing it at higher speeds with greater risk. There's Wyndham. Wyndham in good position once again. After the third place in the first moto. Carmichael and Hughes battle it out. We'll be right back with more 250 action. The action here at Glen Helen Raceway. The battles for second place. Bar to bar we go. Hughes, number 120 on the Honda four-stroke. The Yamaha four-stroke of Tim Ferry, number 15. Ferry makes the pass going up the hill. That better outside line, that's what Travis was using in the 125 class. He's able to get a strong drive out of the corner. Blew by Hughes, no problem. So Ferry moves into second place. And Hughes, his goggles are missing. So I wondered, it's too early for arm pump. There goes Tortelli around him as well. Hughes is faster than that. He's got no goggles right now. He's just a sitting duck. So Hughes having to turn his head using his visor to take care of the roost. But I got to hand it to Ryan. He's hanging in there with all kinds of courage. Earlier this week, our crew's got an inside look at Ryan Hughes at home. This week's on the profile. Hey, come on in. I thought you guys are coming a little later, a week or two, but uh, just getting my yard done, landscaping. We just moved in here about uh, two months ago, so still under construction. Show you my house. Got a pool table here. It's from my dad. 
He bought it when he was around. I always can get a nicer one, but uh, I like to keep this for memories, you know? So then over here, I had uh, this trophy case built. And, uh, you know, there's a couple things from racing. I don't like to keep too much stuff around, but a little bit. Got this from Donations. My mechanic, Wyatt Seals, got this done for me. So uh, it means a lot. Came close to winning one time, and it's always been my goal to win it. And finally did it. Whoa. Well, here's uh, my little guy, Evander. He's around. Can you say hi? No? A little shy. And here we got the uh, kitchen. That's where I spend most of my time, eating. I like to eat. We got some steaks and strawberries and a lot of organic food. Try to keep it healthy. Over here, we got, got my big entertainment center built. Nothing too exciting, but uh, got good <clears throat> surround sound on there. So if I'm playing movies, turn up real loud. My wife, Jennifer, expecting another baby, so she's relaxing. <laughs> Got a little bar made here. You know, it's small, but I'll be putting my kegerator in here when I'm done racing. If I do good, then I can buy it. Here we have uh, my son's playroom. All the uh, team managers out there. Hey, look, I already got him in training, so be prepared. He'll be uh, coming after me. He's already practicing, so he's not. He kind of rides like me a little bit, but. <laughs> My kid has uh, enough toys to last probably two families, but if you make the money, might as well spend the money a little bit. We'll have to go upstairs and show you the rest. So follow me. And here we got a guest room. Uh, if you do stay at my house, you gotta sleep on the floor because uh, we don't have a bed yet. Over here, you can kind of watch people not play pool very well, like myself. Then you got pictures of family, you know, kid and wedding pictures and mother and father all that good stuff and here I got a sitting room I guess probably just uh, if you want to read or I really don't know what it's for but it's kind of a cool room windows I like it and here I got my son's room in here got the uh, roly-poly Oli. We watch, we watch this every morning this is a good cartoon right here. Even I like it. Race car bed. He doesn't spend much time in here unless he gets in trouble, so. Eh, maybe he does spend a lot of time in here. <laughs> in here is where I sleep. It's the master bedroom. This is where I've got the nickname Rhino. I like this room. This bed is real comfortable, but I don't spend much time in it. And up here is my favorite part of the house is the gym. Uh, I can just get out of bed, walk up the stairs, and boom, start working out. In my career, I've uh, overtrained, I think, for the last 10 years, but uh, I've wanted to win so bad, and if someone was training, I was going to do double. But uh, this year, I've kind of learned uh, to rest a little bit more, kind of listening to my body. And now I do that, but I still use this place quite a bit. I don't have to go to the gym and wait for people uh, to stop jibber jabbing, and, you know, I can get in with the workout. All right, now we're outside here. Um, as you can tell, still not done. Got a pool with a little bit of water, but I know that would hurt if you dove in that. Got myself a hammock out here. I like to relax sometimes at night. Jacuzzi, you know, pretty simple, pretty basic. This is my dog, Buster. Huh, you say hi to the camera? <laughs> you say hi to the camera? Yeah, this is Buster. So if you come in my backyard, he'll tear your head off. Huh, tear his head off. <laughs> Well, welcome to my garage. This is my other part of favorite house, gym, garage. I got some trophies and helmets I like to keep around. I got a uh, mountain bike from Tomac. Johnny Tomac sponsors me. And I got, you know, a couple 250s. This bike has a new Woody Woodpecker deal from Universal Studios, so that's kind of cool. You know, the kids like that. And this is, this is the baby. This is the one. Been sweet talking it, trying to make sure it understands about what I need to be done this year. 120 was my first number in uh, amateur career. Came back from Europe, had to pick a number, so I picked one that's been good to me. And hopefully with this combination, I'll be a good year and be on the podium. With all that, you see my house, see my yard, see my garage. Man, I need to rest. It's hot out here, so I'll see you later.
Front here for the 252nd moto, but this is the battle for the overall victory, the big trophy. Tim Ferry took a second in the first moto. Number 13 behind him, Tortelli, won the first moto. This is the battle for the overall at this point in the race. Second and third place, that's where they're currently battling, and Tortelli is wanting to put more pressure on Tim Ferry. They're going through that section of the racetrack where Ferry had that problem the first moto run. Oh! Over. Tortelli ran into the back tire of Ferry and he went down. He got a little too close there, Art, and I don't think he realized what Ferry was going to do. That's the first time he's followed him through that corner and Ferry had a different line. So Lusk, his teammate, is out in front. That's LaRocco taking advantage of Tortelli trying to get back into the race. And there's Kevin Windham. Kevin has been solid today. Great ride in the first moto to third. And he's been solid here, working his way up through this pack. Watch what happens. Ferry comes into this corner, and he's going to try to cut out to the inside. Watch his rear wheel lock up. As he's looking to cut to the inside, have a good line into the next corner. Tortelli doesn't notice that, hits his back tire, high sides. That could cost him the overall. A tough break for Tortelli. And there's Tortelli muscling his way by LaRocco. That's usually the other way around. Boy, you don't get away with that very often. <laughs> LaRocco, a new two-year contract with Honda. His Amps Oil Dr. Martin's Honda has performed consistently all year. He tries to get back on Tortelli now, but Lusk is in front of uh, Sebastian. He's got his work cut out for him, David. But Sebastian lands on the downside of that plateau and just rockets away. That crash didn't affect him. We picked it up and started again, even though I went for the Kickstarter twice. He seemed pretty composed, took his time, and now he's just right back in this fight. I don't think he feels like he's out of it yet. He's still charging hard, trying to save this overall victory. Well, Rocco, you see him going by in sixth place. Let's take a look at the Honda Field summary now. Carmichael, Ferry, Wyndham, Lusk, and Tortelli, the top five. Rocco, as we mentioned, next in the order. Morocco trying to fight back after a fourth place finish in the first moto. He'd like to get up in that top three. We'll be right back after this word from our sponsors. But first of all, think about it. Our Suzuki trivia question. Name the only national event that Tim Ferry has won. It was Ricky Carmichael, but if Tim Ferry finishes in his current second position, he would win the overall. Our Suzuki trivia question, the answer, Tim Ferry's lone national win was Mount Morris. I might add he was on a 125 at that time, however. This would be his very first 250 national victory. If he hangs on to second place, anyway. Davey Combs is with the mechanic of Tim Ferry. Davey? All right, Brian, forget about Carmichael. Three laps to go. It's all between you and Wyndham for the overall. Yeah, it's going to be a nail biter. Um, we're in second, pretty solid. Wyndham's right there, but, you know, the gap hasn't changed much for almost the whole race. Um, if it stays the way it'll be, we'll get the overall, and Wyndham will be second. Are you going to tell Tim to start looking at his rearview mirror? I've just been giving him his splits. He knows where he's at. Um, he's just going to, I guess, try and stay cool. You know, he, he knows he's there. He knows the gap between them, and all he's got to do is ride his race. I think we'll get it. You think this would be more important or maybe a little more severe than that first moto victory would have been, an overall? I don't know, a victory's really nice, but uh, definitely an overall is, is definitely the way to start off a season. Especially if it's your first overall victory in your career. He's looking smooth, David. He's got that outside line dialed squares back, able to clear that double jump. He's solid, Art. I mean, he is pushed to the point where other riders around him are making mistakes, and he's in a position to scoop this up. Tim Ferry holding on to second place. Before the opening round of the motocross series, the folks at Glen Helen and Chaparral teamed up to put on the second annual Moto Charity Golf Tournament to help raise money for the Emergency Trauma Care Center at Loma Linda Hospital. Number 15, Tim Ferry was there, along with former Woo! champions Jeff Emig and Greg Albertine. Nathan Ramsey, Grant Langston, they were all there to get a good round of golf in. You know, it all goes for charity. This one's going to Loma Linda Hospital, which is right here near Glen Helen. 
You know, a, lot of, a few of the riders have actually been there and, uh, you know, had to stay there for a while, so that's cool. You know, it's worthwhile dedicating our time to this and, uh, you know, just uh, it's definitely for a good cause. Loma Linda is a great hospital and uh, things are good. Thanks to his dad's high bid, Taylor Kellstrom had the opportunity to golf with his racing hero, Kevin Windham. Taylor's more impressed with the Suzuki Riders racing style than his golf game. It's awesome. I mean, he's such a cool guy. He needs to kind of work on his golfing, but he's cool. But he can whip us all on the racetrack. While the day was about having fun, none of the racers were about to give up their day jobs. You know, we're definitely outside of our uh, profession, obviously, by the, by the way most of us are hacking around. But it's a lot of fun, and, and that's the way I think everybody's attitude is today, is just out having a good time and you know, trying to enjoy day golf. Also raised more than $30,000. Giving back is something you do if you love something. It, it, I love motocross. And it's obvious the fans do here in the San Bernardino area because it is a record crowd. Kevin Windham in third place. But he's got quite a bit of ground to pick up if he's going to catch the overall title here in Tim Ferry in second. You know, I'm looking at the way the Supercross season went for Kevin and then looking at his finishes here. I'm pretty impressed with the start of the season for him. I think even though he'd like to win it, I mean, look at LaRocco. That's the guy that usually comes up through Kevin and he's holding him off. No problem. This is a solid ride for Wyndham, especially to be that close for the overall. And you're the mechanics. They're not factoring in Tortelli. Tortelli can pick up a spot that first moto win. He could sneak in there and grab the overall. This sport is so unique because you leave Supercross and like Ricky Carmichael just dominates and has a string of 13 straight victories. And then you, the next week, you're in motocross. You don't have time to uh, to even think about the glories. But for some, like Kevin Windham, maybe Ezra Lusk as well, you know, it's really refreshing to have a new season to get into in the middle of the year. Yeah, I think they were happy to get out of that. And, you know, Lusk, I think he's capable of a little bit more than what he's doing today. But remember, he didn't ride a week ago at the final round in Vegas because he crashed and either broke or bruised some ribs, so he's not riding at 100% right now. Also, Hughes had to stop and get goggles. He's just looking like he's getting back into the top 10. Boy, the angle of that shot, you can really see how steep the hills are here at Glen Helen. This one coming up is straight up. Clear this double jump. As you head up that hill, it just, it's straight up at the top. Oh. You can see, like, if they were going up this hill, the way they're going up Mount St. Helens and the other one where Carmichael had his problem with first moto, right into the sun. They can't even see the track. And in the last three years, I can't remember LaRocco really doing any much better than he is right now. Maybe he just needs to get the season kind of going, figure out where he fits in with the rest of these guys, pick it up. It's been a while since he's won here at Glen Helen. 1993, he was on a Kawasaki. It was a good year for him. So out of 11, 250 motocross wins in a career, and a championship. One of those came on this track. Ricky Carmichael, he has never lost, except for the first moto today. Boy, he looks good. He's going so fast. Well, he's atop the Honda current standings, but Ferry and Wyndham, second and third, the overall is on the line. Chevy trucks, the most dependable, long-lasting trucks on the road. And by Honda's Deals to Move On, now's the time to get the world's best deals on the world's best bikes. Ricky Carmichael has dominated his second moto, but Ricky Carmichael's streak of 13 straight wins on the year will have been broken after this race is over with, as well as his streak here at Glen Helen. Eight out of eight motos he won before today's first moto. And here's an incredible fact. This would be the first time since Mount Morris last year that RC has not been on the podium in an AMA race in the 250 action. That includes Supercross, U.S. Opens, and Nationals. That's 27 consecutive podiums for Ricky Carmichael broken here today. As he takes the checkered flag in this second moto, it will place him fourth in the final overall standings. Well, he gets the final say in this this moto here to take this momentum to the next round at Hangtown. I don't think he's worried about that first moto in the long haul, but 
I know it'll frustrate him because he likes to dominate. After such a brilliant Supercross season, Carmichael hoping to double up and get the season sweep with a championship in the motocross action. Well, he's still got 11 more of those races to go. 22 motos. You can hear the uh, screams of the fans, the cheering. He's shaking his head right there going, yeah, I won this one, but man, I wanted to win it. Again, keep the streak alive. So the checkered flag for Ricky Carmichael. But the second place rider, Tim Ferry, will get the overall championship, number 15, with two second places in today's moto action. Ferry coming in toward the area of his crew. Carmichael giving him all five, and I think that's his dad. The Florida natives revel in their position as Carmichael wins the second moto ferry. Wyndham, Larocco, and Tortelli rounding out the top five. Hughes, after getting new goggles, came up to ninth. The privateer, Kyle Lewis, in tenth. Davey. RC, I know your day didn't start out the way you wanted to, but nice ending. Thanks a lot, Davey. Uh, I don't know what the deal was with the hay bales at the top of the track, but uh, I, I don't know. I should have looked at it. Uh, on my heat on my parade lap but seems like it was a little further out there than it should have been and i don't know i felt like it was my day i i feel like this is my home track even though i don't live out here i'm really disappointed in in today's outcome uh i'm happy with the second moto but i'm not pleased at all with the first moto i made a stupid mistake on my behalf uh, uh, up the uphill but the bike was working excellent and i'm just gonna have to play catch up the next couple weeks RC, this is the first time you've lost a race since January 20th. It's been a heck of a streak. It has. It's been a, a great year. I can't complain. But uh, just to lose at Glen Helen and, and stop my streak here is uh, kind of a bummer. But uh, I showed that I was the fastest guy today. And we'll take it to next weekend. Carmichael won the battle. But Tim Ferry, as you see here with a 2-2, wins the war. He gets the overall trophy. The first time a four-stroke has won the 250 overall since 1999 in Washougal. Jimmy Button, let's go back to Davey. Well, Tim, for the first time since 1995, you're in the winner's circle, and you probably couldn't have picked a bigger race to do it at than Glen Helen. Yeah, you know, the last couple of Supercrosses went really well for me, and I just had a lot of confidence coming into this race, and, you know, the Yamaha 426 worked real good. I, you know, it was, it was a perfect uh, perfect track for a four-stroke, and uh, I'm glad to come away with a win. Uh, a 2-2, I won that actually back in 95, I won with a 2-2 also, and I don't know, I almost won that first moto, but uh, hey, I'll take the, take the win any way I can get it. It's got to be sweet redemption. I and mean, what about the four-strokes? A lot of people are talking about the new Honda. You came out and showed them Yamaha's still out front. Yeah, you know, we passed them both motos, and uh, it left them by quite a big uh, margin, and uh, I, I really like the four-stroke. I'm mean, uh, getting more comfortable with it, and I think I'm only going to get faster throughout this outdoor season. Well, I'll tell you what, if anything goes like the rest of the summer goes like these last three weeks with a good Supercross finish and then coming out here and winning, might be your year. Yeah, you know, we'll see. Uh, I know Ricky got a little get off of that first moto, but uh, this year I think there's a lot more competition. Top five guys are a lot closer in speed, so I, I think we're going to see a really good outdoor season. Congratulations on the win to you and your wife, Abby. All right, thank you very much. Ferry with only a three-point advantage on Tortelli, a four-point advantage on Wyndham. But look at this. The top five are in great position for championship points after today's action. We had really underdogs defeat the defending champions today. Ferry called it, too. He said it wasn't going to be a runaway. There was going to be a lot of guys in there contending, and any one of those top five guys can win this championship. Congratulations, too, to Grant Langston in the 125 division. Well, he said he was going to do well, and he went out there and backed it up. I think Travis did a good job to come from behind, but he's got his hands full with that South African. A reminder, too, that round three of the United States Motocross Championships will be seen on ABC on June 3rd, in addition to our regular ESPN2 coverage. Hope you can join us on ESPN2 for round three.